to close all public schools in the state of Arizona. Our Daniel Lerner just finished speaking with the state, state uh, superintendent just a moment ago. Daniel joining us live. Uh, obviously, this was a very big decision for them. I, I guess what was the breaking point? Because I know parents were they were pushing for this to happen. Yeah, Justin, that was one of the big questions of why didn't this happen sooner? And when I spoke with Superintendent Hoffman, she said, look, a lot of it came down to consistency. Once one or two schools started closing, it was almost inevitable that several other districts would follow suit. And also, they met earlier today, Superintendent Hoffman and Governor Ducey, and just decided we need to be a unified front in this. We need to, plan to have a unified plan for that consistency that they spoke about. Also interesting, I asked if the fact that the Mesa Education Association and the Arizona Education Association, they were pushing hard for this statewide closure for the last couple of days. Those are the two uh, largest uh, groups for education professionals in our state. And she said, yes, that did play into this. But also, this is interesting, teachers expressing their concerns for their own safety. They said they have several older teachers who didn't feel comfortable, who maybe have underlying health conditions. And because of our ongoing teacher shortage, they were concerned they wouldn't have enough teachers to even fill the classrooms. And so that was another factor in this. A lot of the big questions, Justin, right now they addressed in that video things like meal plans. A lot of the students depend on those free and reduced lunches. So they're going with the districts. They'll be making individualized plans, whether they do door to door delivery or whether they do a drive by pickup kind of a situation. Also, pay. A lot of people on Twitter, especially, asking me to ask her about teacher pay and especially certified staff as they're hourly. And as you heard in that video, she reiterated they are working on some legislation to make sure there is no interruption in pay. So again, a lot of questions. They also brought up state testing. She said they do have a flexible window for that, and so they're possibly looking uh, to see when the students may have to do standardized testing. But there are so many questions still and so many different uh, parts in this. For instance, some people bringing up remote learning and are some of the schools going to send home material with the students? Well, Superintendent Hoffman brought up not everybody has internet at home. And so there's going to be a lot of individualization to this, as she mentioned. But as you heard in that video, they are going to keep giving continuous updates. She said they have constant meetings pretty much all throughout the week. And Justin, I asked her if those here at the Department of Education are doing any sort of social distancing. And she said, yes, she has several people on her staff who are able to telecommute. And so those who can are doing that. Um, but she also said, you know, this is the time when parents and students need the Department of Education uh, to communicate and to be working to serve them however they can. So I think, Justin, the big takeaway tonight was a lot of these questions are on their radar. There are no clear answers yet, but they say they are working to get as many of those questions answered as possible. Danielle, did she give any indi indication of what parents are supposed to do tomorrow when most kids are going to be going back to school? Because they do use schools for nutrition and for health care sometimes. So uh, when this came across tonight, everyone was just kind of like, whoa, now what are they supposed to do tomorrow? What are these parents yeah. supposed to do? Yeah, well, and it's hard to say for tomorrow because, like you said, this decision just came down. So she said a lot of those questions uh, may vary district by district. So it's a good idea to check your district's website. I know a lot of the school districts have been great about updating the information. They have special sections regarding COVID-19. Uh, going forward, she mentioned that some of the school districts, I think she mentioned actually Chandler, is partnering with um, some of their health care workers who work in the health care industry to see if they can possibly help with some of the child care. I know know Boys and Girls Club um, opening up their centers. Part of the problem here, though, is they don't want all of these students now congregating in another area, such as a daycare center um, or another facility. So she said that's why they were hesitant at first to do a statewide closure. Uh, but again, things that are going to continue to develop as these days and as those two weeks go on, Justin.